Welcome to Unlocking Your Limitless Life, where hidden inside your biggest problems truly are your greatest possibilities. I'm Susan Schatzer, your host, and I have my amazing, beautiful friend, Maria Fernanda Lariva. We have been partners in consciousness. We're consciousness revolutionaries together, um, international facilitators together. Maria speaks five languages. She is an international number one best-selling author. Her books are number one on five different continents. And she happens to be um, an energetic health coach as well as an empowerment facilitator. She travels the world, visits many different countries, and has this program, amazing program, called Your Creating Your Reality. I almost said Unlocking Your Limitless Life. I almost said the name of the TV show. <laughs> okay. It does yeah. unlock it too. So. Right. That's right. It does unlock your limitless life. Maybe that was the energy <laughs> of it together. But yes, creating your reality. Um, and I've asked Maria to come on the show today because um, she we've known each other for so long and Maria has an amazing life that she has lived. And I wanted her to share a little bit about you know where you started in life and how things kind of progressed for you because literally um, it started to lock up and now she's in a limitless state so we want to find out a little bit more about it so tell us about what it was like growing up when you were a kid well thank you for having me here oh you're welcome all. you're welcome <laughs> first of all it was a beautiful and wonderful surprise to be part of this thank you susan um what was it like well um, I grew up, well, I, I was born, um, what would I say, I was born very well, in a very well family, um, I couldn't say wealthy, I don't know, I wasn't, we weren't billionaires, but, but um, it was a, my father was a politician and I lived in a beautiful house, we used to travel a lot, um, I used to have my own car that would take me to the supermarket to buy my candies. <laughs> and a driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, so that um, went on um, all the way to my travels to Europe where my father was named ambassador in Paris, in France, from Venezuela, because I am Venezuelan. And, um, and in France, um, everything got, everything just, didn't work. Everything started not working at all, actually. And, um, and what happened was that my parents decided to divorce and I was left alone. Like, on my point of view, I was abandoned by, by my father. And uh, eventually, just to make the story short, I was put later on in boarding school. So since I was like probably nine, eight, nine years old, I was in boarding schools and feeling abandoned. And um, of course, feeling abandoned, I feel like my parents didn't love me. Uh, nobody loved me. And so after that, my whole life was in a trauma and drama of how lonely I was. And that was my stuckness there. Yes. That's where I was stuck. You were by yourself, you were alone, you were abandoned, nobody loved you, nobody cared about you. Yeah. And it was, it was traumatic. Definitely. Like, you grew up with you know, lots of kids who had, uh, you know, parent involvement. And you would tell me that, you know, when it was holiday vacations that, or summer breaks that, you know, the parents would fly in on their jets, pick up their kids, take them home, and you were still there. Yeah. Like you were left there. Yes. And it reminds me of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, kind of. That's true. <laughs> That's why I identify myself with Harry Potter. And uh, even in the magic, too. <laughs> and so you, you carried that literally with you into your adulthood. Definitely. Like that came with yes, you. Yes, definitely. So I was always, um, I was always alone. I always felt lonely. I always felt abandoned. Um, I felt that I wasn't worth because when you're abandoned, supposedly, right. you know, you're not worth. So let me leave her alone because she's not worth. I'm not going to stay with her. So that, that was me growing up. That was exactly me growing up. And um, do you want me to tell you about the turnaround or? Yeah, well, because I know, you know, how did you land in Florida? In Florida was because, <laughs> oh, this is, this is a cool part too. What happened was that um, in my travels, um, I was destined to go to Brazil. And my father ended up, my mother ended up marrying a Brazilian, uh, a Brazilian person. So, um, 
for the first time in my life, and this was actually all planned by me. It was very, very meticulously planned, calculated, <laughs> calculator and planned. Yeah,、um, it was for the first time. My father told, my mother told me, Maria, would you like to come and live with me? And、uh, it was the only way that I could end up in Brazil, and I end up. Moving with them to Brazil to a beautiful, beautiful place, a beautiful, beautiful、uh, neighborhood, one of the prettiest neighborhood in São Paulo, and、um, and again it happened again. My stepfather told my mom, "You picked either her or me, and there goes Maria. You have to leave the house where my parents, where my mother told me you have a month to leave the house." But I, as proud as I am. And as strong as I know, I always knew I was. I said, "I'm not going to stay here a month with some people that don't like me and don't love me. I'm leaving." So I started、um, packing my suitcase, and I had no idea what I was going to do, but I just knew that I had to leave. So what happened there was that the maid that I had、um, had a favela, which is kind of like the ghettos, you know, the, those cardboard.、Yeah. Little houses in the mountains of Latin America, and、um, and so I, she came to me and she said, Maria, where are you gonna go? I said, I don't know. I'm gonna live in the streets. I don't know where I'm going. But I knew deep inside that I was not gonna live in the streets. But she came to me. She went to a room, came to me, gave me her keys, and she says, These are the keys of my favela, of my house.、Uh, you can go and live there. And、um, and see the funny thing is that you see that repeating is what you know. It's what I do. What I teach in my class, creating your reality, is that you create your reality or you live something until you're seven years old, and after that, it's just a recording. You keep you keep putting on the same recording all your life, creating the same, maybe not exactly the same situations, but having the same feelings every single time. And in my case, my drama was abandonment. So I was again abandoned. My so it's my different people, different places, but same thing. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. And you're not the only one. Oh yes,、okay. I'm the only one, Susan. You、happened. are the only one. <laughs> the only one. You're that, that messed up. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but many of、one. our viewers can probably relate to what you're talking about, and it may be abandonment, like you're you're mentioning, or it could be something else. But that it continues to kind of loop around. It repeats. Or when you have many boyfriends and they're all the same with different names, <laughs> it's the same thing. Yes, <laughs> I resemble that remark. Yeah, so、um, we're going to stop here for today, and、um, thank you very much for joining us.、Uh, we are going to pick it up tomorrow with an amazing、um, talk. We're going to take Maria from where she is、um, in what is it called, the Fair Villa. Favela, favela, not fair villa, but favela. favela. <laughs> <laughs> And she has the keys there. Thank you so much for joining us. You are listening to Unlocking Your Limitless Life. If what we're speaking to you about resonates with you, then head on over to our Facebook group, Unlocking Your Limitless Life. And we look forward to seeing you in person someday. Ciao for now.